Hello guys, this is Avinash and you're watching Everything Metallurgy. So friends, we are dealing with the secondary steel making. There is nothing but the ladle treatments. Okay. So today in this video, we look at the different functions. What are the different functions that will be done in this secondary steel making or the ladle treatments. Okay. So in this steel making, generally we know ladles are uh, usually employed in order to transfer the molten steel from either uh, electric arc furnace or BOF that means the primary steel making furnace into the casting so in between this transfer of the metal there are many functions they, it is realized that the ladles can be used very efficiently as one of the reactor in order to perform some functions okay so to now we'll see we'll look at the different functions that can be done in the ladles so the first one is desulfurization we have already studied about desulfurization so desulfurization is usually done either on the blast furnace runner or in case if there is any residual sulfur left out in the steel then it can be done after the primary steel making in this ladle okay and the next important one is homogenization Homogenization is nothing but definitely there will be some gradients or differences between the, in the temperature or in the concentrations. So to homogenize the molten steel is to minimize the gradients in concentration or the temperature okay due to uh, maybe tapping or teaming etc. Okay so there will be definitely some differences in the different locations of the steel. So to uniformly homogenize the steel, generally this homogenization is done and it is usually done by stirring, gas stirring, okay, with the help of argon. Okay, the next one is homogenization. There are many other things, ladle treatments like deoxidation and degassing. Okay, deoxidation is nothing but the removal of oxygen and degassing is nothing but the removal of other gases that are dissolved in the steel for example nitrogen hydrogen etc okay this is also done in the ladles only okay and other one other important one is inclusion engineering so what is this inclusion engineering inclusion engineering is nothing but decreasing or modifying the inclusions that are present in the steel okay we'll look at it how it is done also okay and uh, generally there are uh, addition of along elements can also be done in this ladles only addition of alloying elements okay all these are the different functions that can be done in the ladle treatments so usually uh, now we'll see how this deoxidation is done okay we know what is desulfurization we have discussed already homogenization is nothing but stirring with the help of organs which we have already also discussed that so now in this video we'll discuss about deoxidation okay so what is deoxidation as i already said it is nothing but the removal of dissolved oxygen from the steel okay deoxidation is nothing but the removal of the dissolved oxygen so why we have to do this deoxidation and how this dissolved oxygen is present in the steel so generally we know the refining or the primary steel making is usually done under oxidizing atmosphere that means we are providing the oxygen in order to remove the impurities so in that uh, process there will be some oxygen that will be dissolved into the steel why because steel that is in the liquid steel has a higher amount of solubility okay higher solubility of oxygen is there for the liquid steel we'll see uh, why also so the solubility of oxygen is negligibly small during the solidification so that means liquid steel 
this dissolved oxygen or the solubility solubility of O2 in liquid is greater than the solid steel. So what happens where this extra oxygen will go? So during the solidification, we know on casting we are converting this liquid steel into solid steel. So during this process, the excess oxygen is rejected out. Okay, this excess whatever the excess oxygen because we are seeing this is more content. So the excess oxygen will be rejected by solidifying the steel and this excess oxygen produces many defects okay uh, uh, for example like blow holes porosity etc okay and sometimes this oxygen is very dangerous because it forms non-metallic oxide non-metallic oxide that means this oxygen reacts with some non-metals present and this non-metallic oxides are inclusions okay these are inclusions and these are to be removed or modified so this oxygen is very dangerous because these generally these inclusions or all the type of inclusions are usually brittle in nature so these defects or these inclusions impair the mechanical properties of the steel so that's why there is requirement of removal of oxygen okay so this removal of this oxygen is known as b oxidation okay and one more thing this dissolved oxygen cannot be removed as molecular oxygen it cannot be removed as o2 okay whereas this oxygen forms products for example as i said non metallic oxide this oxygen will be forming some products like sio2 Al2O3 etc. Al2O3 MnO etc. So these are known as deoxidation products. Deoxidation products. So the oxygen is removed in the form of these deoxidation products. Okay. So now we will see what are the different types of steels. Okay, there is classification of steel based on the degree of deoxidation also. So, we will see the different types and then we will see how to remove this deoxidation that means the operation of deoxidation. Okay, so usually uh, as I already said at 1600 degrees that means liquid steel. Okay, liquid steel has an oxygen solubility of about 0.23 percentage okay at 1600 degrees celsius whereas when it is coming to room temperature on solidification that means solid steel has about only 0.003 percentage at room temperature okay so this is the drastic difference between this so because of this only there will be excess oxygen that is present and that is to be removed okay so according to the degree of deoxidation as i said the steels may be divided into three types the first one is killed steel killed steel semi killed steel and rimmed steel or you can call rimming steel okay these are the three different types of steels present so kill steel is nothing but where here in kill steels oxygen is completely removed whatever oxygen is present in the steel it is completely removed out. okay that is kill steel in semi kill steel the these are nothing but the semi kill steels are nothing but incompletely deoxidized steels okay that means these contain some amount of oxygen after deoxidation also those are semi kill rimming steels are nothing but these are generally uh, non deoxidized or very partially deoxidized steels okay so generally this is low carbon steels okay generally these are low carbon steels okay and this carbon wherever this oxygen is present so this oxygen reacts with this carbon and forms co okay this co will be evolving out during solidification so these are three different types of steels 
based on the degree of classified based on the degree of deoxidation okay so now we'll see how this deoxidation is done and what is the process of this deoxidation <coughs> okay so usually deoxidation is done by either single elements or mixture of these elements that means either single elements like aluminium silicon manganese so that the oxygen present will be reacting with this okay or the mixture of this mixture of these elements okay either single elements can be added or the mixture of these elements can be added okay and these elements as i said these single elements are added in the form of ferro alloys okay these are added in the form of ferro alloys that means ferro silicon ferro aluminium etc okay so these are used single elements why we are using these because aluminium silicon manganese has generally has a very good um, capability or very good affinity towards oxygen and this can easily form the deoxidation products that is why we are using silicon aluminum or manganese okay so this deoxidation by single elements is known as simple deoxidation whereas when this mixture is used it is known as complex deoxidation okay simple deoxidation and complex deoxidation so these are ferro alloys which are used in order to remove the dissolved oxygen content so generally now we'll see what is the total oxygen content that is present in the steel it is the dissolved oxygen plus the oxygen present in the products the oxidation products that means the whatever sio2 al2o3 and mno okay so there is some amount of oxygen that will be present in these deoxidation products also so deoxidation process involves not only the removal of this dissolved oxygen but this deoxidation products must also be removed out okay so this both must be removed in this deoxidation products process and now we'll see how this deoxidation process is done or what are the different steps involved in this deoxidation process okay the first one is dissolution dissolution and homogenization dissolution and homogenization so what is this in this i mean uh, if we consider the mechanism this is the first step dissolution and homogenization it means that the ferro alloys whatever ferro alloys we need to add these are added and generally the ferro alloys melt at about 1500 degrees okay the ferro alloys will be melt at 1500 degrees okay so this homogenization is governed by intensity of the agitation also as we know dissolution is nothing but the melting point of ferro alloys is about 1500 and the steel temperature is 1600 degrees so it can be easily melted dissolution is nothing but the melting of these products and homogenization is nothing but uniformity maintaining the uniformity of the melt and this is done by the agitation agitating the bath with argon gas okay so this is the first step the next one is the nucleation and growth nucleation and growth is nothing but the nucleating the deoxidation products is done okay the nucleation will be done if there is any interface for example uh, heterogeneous nucleation is done and the deoxidation products are nuclei uh, nucleated okay and similarly after the formation of the nuclei it is growed that means growth is the process okay it depends on the state of the products so usually a liquid product can easily grow in size as compared to the solid products that is why ferro alloys are used because they can be easily melted and they can form a liquid product okay so liquid products are usually 
um, obtained and nucleated and these are usually grown okay growth is nothing but increasing the size okay increasing the size of the product now the final step is the removal okay after growing you must see the removal of these products okay so how this removal is done it is nothing but simple it is also one of the we know that not only removing the dissolved oxygen we have also required to remove these deoxidation products whatever products that are formed we have to remove that also so it is achieved by flotation and absorption Float, uh, for example if we divide it into two steps it is done by flotation and absorption okay so as we know after the growing of this deoxidation product after growth the movement through the molten steel to the surface that means whatever product is formed it should be floated to the surface that is nothing but the flotation and after floating onto the surface these inclusions or these deoxidation products must be absorbed by the slag that is nothing but absorption that means whatever the formed product whatever the bigger size particles that are obtained by growth these are floated to the surface of the steel and after that it is absorbed into the slag layer okay so flotation and absorption so this is how the removal of these products is done so this is the mechanism of deoxidation firstly dissolution and homogenization next nucleation and growth where the dissolved oxygen reacts with the ferrolize and forms the deoxidation products and these deoxidation products must also be removed and these are removed by these two steps flotation and absorption and here the flotation also depends upon the physical properties of the steel that means with what speed the deoxidation product is coming out or floating it okay so here terminal velocity terminal velocity is calculated so according to stokes law the terminal velocity is equal to 1 by 18 mu g d square and the difference in the density this is the formula for the terminal velocity where mu is the viscosity of the melt g acceleration due to gravity d is nothing but the size of the deoxidation product rho s means the density of the steel and rho l is the density of the liquid deoxidation product so depending on the physical properties as i said flotation depends on the physical properties physical property is nothing but the viscosity and the density and also the size of the product if you see v is proportional to d square terminal velocity is proportional to d square that means if the size of the deoxidation product is more then the velocity with which it is floating is also more that is why growth is very important here okay so this is about the deoxidation process okay thank you guys